When it was first announced that Paul George and Kawhi Leonard would be joining the Los Angeles Clippers, the expectations were very high and many people considered them the NBA title favorites. However, after a very disappointing playoff run last season and the formation of a few new super teams in the NBA, the Clippers are one of the most forgotten teams in the league right now and many people don't have them on their radar for being a legit NBA title contender this season. So in today's video, we'll talk about the Clippers and why I think they could be a sleeper and they may possibly be the best team in the NBA. Let's get right into it. If you have not already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm uploading videos every single week and the support goes a long way. But anyways, getting right into things, obviously when the Clippers first announced that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George were joining their team, the hype was very, very high. These guys are two top 10 players in the league. In my opinion, Kawhi Leonard is top 5 in the league when he's healthy, and Paul George is easily a top 10 player in my eyes. He's even an MVP candidate before he joined the Clippers, and when Kawhi Leonard is not playing for the Clippers, Paul George looks like he is a superstar player. So having two elite 3 and D wings like the Clippers do is something that not any other team in the NBA has, at least in my opinion. However, even though Kawhi Leonard and Paul George obviously both being superstars are a huge part of the Clippers' success, they also have a variety of veteran role players who fill their roles very well. Nicholas Batum has seemingly revived his career in Los Angeles. After not really looking the same since he left Portland, Nicholas Batum is finally showing up in the big moments. He does everything that the Clippers want him to do, and he is just that next score along Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. He gets a bucket when they need him to. Like I said, he just fills his role perfectly. They also have Avika Zubak, who is a very, very skilled big man on both ends of the floor. Inside the paint, he is a very, very good post presence. Rajon Rondo came from the Lakers. We all know what he does. Pass first guy who plays defense, just does all the little things that you want a veteran point guard to do. They also have Serge Ibaka, who came from my Raptors. He is elite on both ends of the floor as well. And even though he is not the same defensive player of the year candidate that he used to be, Serge Ibaka's finishing on the offensive end and defensive presence in the paint is a big help for the Clippers. They also added DeMarcus Cousins. We all know what he is capable of when he is healthy, and although he is not the same player that he used to be, DeMarcus Cousins has still looked pretty good for the Clippers so far this season. They also have guys like Luke Kennard, who is another secondary scorer alongside their two stars. He can fill up the stat sheet, and when Kawhi Leonard or Paul George are sitting out, he does a very, very good job of making up the points. They also have Reggie Jackson, a guy who played for the Clippers during the Lob City Clippers era. One of the best backup point guards in the NBA. He sat behind Chris Paul, came in off the bench, and did everything that you want a backup point guard to do, plus more. He's once again fulfilling that role of coming off the bench doing his job, sometimes starting, scoring the ball, distributing, running the offense. Reggie Jackson just does everything that you want a role player backup guard to do. They also have Marcus Morris, just another veteran presence who does his job. Patrick Patterson, same thing, veteran guy, fulfills his role perfectly. And obviously, they also have Patrick Beverly, a guy whose whole career has just been to disrupt and annoy the crap out of other teams' guards. He is just... I don't even know how to describe Patrick Beverly. If you've seen him, you know what he does, and he is a huge part of the defensive identity on the Clippers. So obviously, with the depth that they have with their role players, aiding their two star players, the Clippers are in a very, very good position, and this is how you want your team to be built come playoff time. They currently have the sixth best record in the entire NBA, Eastern or Western Conference. They have the same record as the Nets right now. So that should tell you something. Everybody's talking about the Nets as this title favorite. And although the Nets do have a slightly worse record because usually they have one of their stars sitting out, the Clippers also usually have one of their stars sitting out. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard oftentimes take turn resting games, especially Kawhi Leonard. We know that load management is a huge thing for him and for the Clippers organization now that they have both Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. And even with one of those guys usually sitting out for a good chunk of their games this season, the Clippers are, like I said, still at the sixth best record in the NBA. So that should really tell you something about how good this team plays even without one of their stars. 
Another thing that gives me a lot of confidence in the Clippers, especially for the playoffs, is their defensive abilities. Throughout most of the season, the Clippers have managed to stay top five in the major defensive categories. And like I mentioned before, that is without one of their star players playing for a good chunk of these games. So even without one of their best perimeter defenders, a top perimeter defender in the league playing for a good chunk of these games, the Clippers role players all do their job very well. They still manage to defend the paint as well as the perimeter very well. They're just all around a very good defensive team. Another thing that I think many people aren't appreciating as much as they should about the Clippers is how they match up against most teams when both of their stars are in the game and healthy. There are very few teams, if any, that can guard both Paul George and Kawhi Leonard when they're on the court at the same time, and if they choose one of them, the other is going to go off, and if they somehow do manage to guard both of these guys, that is when the role players, these veteran guys who do their jobs, come into handy. Avika Zubak cutting to the basket if they decide to trap, he is going to get a dunk every time. Luke Kennard is going to be open for the three. They give the ball to him. He's going to fill up the score sheet. Nick Batum, like I mentioned before, is going to score when he is open. If you decide to shut down the star players, which is very unlikely that you're going to be able to do, the Clippers have other guys who can do the job and fill in if one of these guys is playing bad. Now obviously a lot of people saw the playoff performance last year, especially from Paul George. It was very, very poor and many people blame him for being the reason that the Clippers got knocked out. But I don't think that Paul George is a choker. We saw him play very good in the playoffs when he was on the Pacers. We saw him do a decent job on the Thunder. Paul George had one bad playoff performance and people are completely riding off the Clippers like they don't exist. I think that this is very foolish to do and I think that many teams are going to have matchup problems and not be able to guard both these guys on the offensive end. And then obviously on the defensive end, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George can both lock down other teams opposing star players and to have two elite perimeter defenders like I said before is something that no other team really has. I think that they match up very well against almost any team in the NBA besides maybe the Lakers. but. Like I said, the Clippers have a lot of pieces, they have a lot of things going for them, and their defense is something that I think is going to create a lot of problems come playoff time. So the question is, are the Clippers the best team in the NBA, and should they be considered title favorites? And my personal answer to that is no, but I still think that they have a very good chance to win a title. Just because I do not say that they are title favorites does not mean that I don't think that they could win an NBA championship this year, because that is definitely very possible for the reasons that I mentioned before before i think that they match up very well against almost any team in the nba and if they were able to get past the lakers in the western conference i think that against the nets or against the bucks or against the sixers whoever it is in the eastern conference i think that the clippers match up well against any of those teams so while the clippers are not my personal favorite they are not my pick for the best team in the nba i think the lakers are my favorite if both anthony davis and lebron james are healthy and obviously the nets with james harden kyrie irving and kevin durant if all those guys are playing good they are unstoppable and they will win an nba title but I don't think that people should write off the Clippers, and I think that if Paul George and Kawhi Leonard are both playing good come playoff time, if they are both healthy, I don't think that it is going to be easy for any team to beat the Clippers in a seven-game playoff series. Anyways, that is the video. Let me know what you guys think. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.